Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to Empire Sports here on WTOP 10. It's hard to believe, but this is our season finale. We have a lot to get into, so let's get right to it. Tonight, our guests are Anthony Dulce and Matt Drexler. So, guys, let's first start with the NFL. Three weeks ago on our show, it looked like the Bills, Jets, and Giants all were in that playoff position. Now, not so much. Let's first start with the Jets. Uh, what do you think they need to do with that quarterback situation? I think they need to stick with Geno Smith. They've only given this guy one year, not even a full year. It just he looks he's shown flashes of talent. He's he's played really well at times. The problem is he doesn't really have any talent around him. I think that's a big issue the Jets will need to address in the draft is getting some kind of receiver, maybe like a even a DeAnthony Thomas, just someone very explosive that can help Geno Smith out because right now he's throwing the ball to no one. Well, I definitely agree. Geno Smith has shown some talent. The talent that he has is not that good around him, but comparing his stats to Mark Sanchez's stats going back to last year through their first 12 games, Sanchez with more touchdowns, yeah. um, less interceptions. So as we know, Sanchez won that starting job in the preseason, and then he obviously got hurt in that preseason game. So moving on to next year, I think you do see Sanchez back in that starting quarterback really? role. The Wait contract a second. he has right now in place, Geno Smith has not played well. He played start. He started off well, but then now he's kind of drifted off. He's on a week-by-week -week basis getting the starting job. So Sanchez did win that starting job in the preseason. I think they have total faith in him moving forward. Because they don't. They, where else are you going to go with this team in terms of the quarterback? You think the best possibility for this team is Mark Sanchez? You at that, but you think instead of I think of, he gives them the best chance to win at this point in time. So you think there's nobody out there on the free agent market, nobody that they can draft. You know, well, Johnny at the Manziel. Draft right now they're going to get probably in the teens, ten in terms of where they get the draft. They're not going to get a top ten draft pick at five and seven right now. Johnny Manziel will most likely still be available around those tens. So uh, then you're going to bring in. Three quarterbacks have that major competition. And you're going you're gonna to bring in another quarterback to have no talent to throw to. They need something. They need DeAnthony Thomas from Oregon, Mike Evans from A&M. They need Marquise Lee of USC. They need someone for any quarterback to throw the Mo ball moving to. Moving forward this season, I do think you see Geno Smith in that starting job. Okay. Well, Long term, I think we may see Sanchez. We'll see. Wow. Now with that, uh, is, is the team really to blame, or should the organization look at the head coaching? Is Rex Ryan should be cut in the offseason, and should, the, should the, the Jets be looking for a new head coach? I think yes. I, I, Rex Ryan is a great defensive coordinator. I, he is a brilliant defensive coordinator. But I think he's proven he doesn't know, really know what to do with an offense. Like, you look at it, he was really successful when he had Thomas Jones and Sean Green. But when his running backs aren't working, he doesn't really know what to do with a quarterback. He, he doesn't really have like an, a reasoning of offense. I think he'd make a great defensive coordinator, but it's not like he's just going to step down and reduce himself to a defensive coordinator. I think they need to get rid of Rex Ryan and bring in a more well-rounded coach. I, I agree with you. You hit the nail on the head. Rex Ryan is a defensive coordinator. He's not a head coach. He kind of gives that offensive coordinator total freedom with his offense every single game. Morningweg is, is calling pretty much 100% of the plays. Rex Ryan is calling that defense. It's kind of like two, a two-headed monster in terms of play calling for this team. Rex Ryan, I don't think he's the right guy for the job. They need to kind of restructure this team. I know they're five and seven. We're acting like they're a two-win team, but right now, Rex Ryan, he's not, an, he's not a head coach. Yeah, well, it, it's, you know, with that, uh, you know, I'm interested to see if Rex Ryan will still be a uh, a quarter, uh, so be the head coach next season. Let's go to the Bills. Now, uh, they had such a heartbreaking loss uh, this week uh, on Sunday and against the Falcons, and then with them almost mathematically eliminated uh, from the playoffs. What do you think the Bills need to do in the offseason? It, it, it kind of goes back to talent. Like, they have C.J. Spiller, extremely talented back. They have Fred Jackson, who's aging but still very good. They have a clear number one receiver, I think, in Stevie Johnson. They have a emerging number two in Robert Woods. They have a speed threat in Marquise Goodwin. It just feels like they need something else. Like, there's something that's not clicking. I think a lot of it comes down to the offensive coordinator, Nathaniel Hackett. I think they need to mix up their offensive coordinator because they, they don't really utilize 
C.J. Spiller to the best of his abilities. But in the draft, I think the Bills need offensive line help because their offensive line has looked very fragile at times this year. I, I think they need to build on that. They have a solid defensive line, and they're, they're set everywhere else, but that offensive line needs some help, and they need a new offensive system almost in there. Well, I think the Bills' first step in the offseason, first things first, you've got to resign sign Jarius Bird. Mm -hmm. With that contract, he will be your best defensive player in that secondary. He can create turnovers, get some interceptions. But what are they? Th the question, the big question of the offseason is, what are they going to do? Do they trade C.J. Spiller, try to get no. a draft pick? Absolutely not. I think not. you can get a second-round draft pick for this guy. That's not Fred worth Jackson it. has played well this season. C.J. Spiller is always Fred Jackson's 30 years old. Yeah, but C.J. Spiller is usually in and out of the lineup. He hasn't been consistent in terms of his running ability, his running stats this he's, season. He's also been hurt a lot this yeah, exactly. year. Exactly. So do you, do, you think, do you think that they can kind of move him and try and restructure this backfield. I think that would set them back so much. I, I, I don't think that would benefit them at all. I, I just well, well, wait a second. So you think that they should be giving away their young prospect uh, in C.J. Spiller to go, put all the workload on Fred Jackson. I really think that they actually can work, make this work. The two running back, a two-headed monster. Uh, it really, it, it's, you know, I think the running game, it started off slow, but they looked really good in that Atlanta game. And yes, Atlanta is pretty bad run defense, but if they can start just meshing well and knowing how to use them in the right situations, uh, I think that th this can be a really big threat in years to come in the NFL. You know, and giving up C.J. Spiller, Matt, it, it would be, I think, a terrible decision. Be a huge you know, setback. and you think that, you, that he would be go a second round pick. I, you know, yeah. he's only been in the NFL for four years. He was a big first round pick. I think he's still yeah. worth the of a first round pick. You've seen the flashes. He has incredible talent, the speed. But I don't know. I think EJ Manuel's in the right place. He's mm -hmm. a, he's a, the right quarterback for this team. But yes. he's just CJ Spiller has been so in and out of the lineup, and you need with the young quarterback a strong, consistent running back who you know who will be in the lineup every single week. You also need playmakers. You yeah, need so someone who can Stevie bust Johnson something on open. the outside. But I, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how the offseason goes. Okay, well, let's switch to the Giants, who are really still in the NFC East uh, race because of that wacky of how it is. Um, but because it's very unlikely the Giants will win the division, uh, what do you think they need to do to be a playoff contender once again? I have no idea where what went wrong this year. I, I, I don't know. It just... Nothing seemed to go right, and they've been a little bit better lately. Are they? they they've won like what five of their last six games. Correct they, me they have after that 0-1-6 start. They're yeah. five and seven. They're, it's, they're it's five incredible. and seven. At, that's what the Giants do. They they start off bad and then somehow finish almost in playoff contention. At, I don't. They need offensive line help. They need a little bit of help on their defense, but they're they're set on offense they have a two-time super bowl winning quarterback a two-time super bowl winning coach a very good group of wide receivers with victor cruz hakeem nix reuben randall i just they they need something i don't know what it is running back would probably help i think it starts in the secondary you look at quincy mukamura he could be maybe a top cover corner for this team i know corey webster is going to be a free agent it's interesting to see if they resign him and then Akeem Nix, a free agent, also mm -hmm. a lot of free agents for the Giants moving forward. Well, I know the Giants fans are hoping for not another 0-6 start next season. When we come back, we'll be discussing the Sabres fighting their head coach and longtime GM, Darcy Regeer, along with much the, the much-anticipated whiteout weekend for Laker hockey. Keep it here on WTOP10. Hey, Laker fans. Remember the following. Be loud. Be proud. Be funny. Be civil. Above all, be positive. We've cleaned up our act on the ice. Now it's your turn to clean up yours in the stands. Be funny. <laughs> he took my line! <laughs>
going on, guys? I'm DJ. And I am RJ. And we have a show coming up, so you better watch. It's going to be great. It's going to be dope. But not like that type of dope. It's actually... But maybe that type maybe. of dope. Maybe. Because that type of dope is awesome. Stay back, ambulance. Respond to a one Bravo response. Basement of Pisa Hall. Hey, we were at Savak. How can we help you today? Welcome back to Empire Sports. Now we switch our discussion to the NHL where the Sabres made a huge move firing Ron Wilson and their general manager, Darcy Greer, who was the longest serving the NHL at that position since 1997. What do you think of the decision by owner Terry Pagula, guys? It was absolutely needed. I've been saying this for a while on our radio show. and Ron Wilson needed to go, especially. He has had no control over his players this year. Evidenced by like the bites and the suspensions, and he just he didn't put it didn't look like he was trying to put a winning hockey team on the ice. As for Darcy, he's been the GM for a while. I haven't really had that much of a problem with him. Some of the moves a little questionable, but I guess it was just time for a change. I like the new hirings though, and I think it it should work out well for them. I, I agree. It was time for a change, especially what were they five? I believe five and sixteen at the time of they're the now firing. Now five and twenty. Right, and really? right now they're six twenty and one. Yeah. So obviously mm -hmm. they're not in good in playoff contention at all. They're looking forward to see their future right now. I think it was time for a change in terms of GM and, and the Anthony, coach. I know you're such a big Sabres fan. What yep. do you think of Ted Nolan? You know, do you think he can lead this team to being a you know a, a real head coach uh, in the future, or do you think he's just that interim coach for this season? And who do you think the Sabres should be looking for uh, maybe next season? Um. I could kind of see it going both ways, really. I mean, if Ted Nolan is only like an interim guy, he can he can help teach some of the young players, help them like learn some different things. And if they keep him on for a long-term option, I don't think that's going to be a bad thing. As for replacements, I, I don't really know who they could go after. I don't know what the market is really going to look like. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see if they do get rid of Ted Nolan, who they would actually hire. Mm -hmm. Well, let's switch to college hockey, where. Everyone up here in Oswego is excited for the upcoming Whiteout weekend. Uh, now, I know everyone is looking forward to that men's game uh, against Potsdam and Plattsburgh uh, on Friday and Saturday. But how about that women's team, guys? They are kicking butt. Yeah, yeah, they have, I, they've played real well so far. Yeah, I mean they're six two and one, and and they, they have like experience in that minders. They have senior and a goalie or senior and junior goalies. Yeah. And Catherine Cote yeah. has been a monster. They also had freshman goalie Troy Gervato with a yeah. shutout when they were in Chatham. You know, this Everybody's team is 4-0 is well. at home. When it, I know, you know, they, maybe not as an experience as a, or atmosphere as the men's games at the Campus Center Ice Arena, but really, they know how to play at home. And also, two overtime wins uh, at home. And really, it's all led by that, uh, that great line of uh, the Canadian connection, I like to call them. Uh, Olivia Boris and Emma Satanic and Melissa Simon. So, so Drex, I know you're, you cover uh, for NYO, the, uh, the women's hockey team. What do you think this team going forward, the, the sky is the limit for this team. How do you think uh, they can go forward in the season? Well, it all starts with the leadership in the locker room. As you, as you said, they have a good combination of juniors and seniors, Boris and uh, Simon. And then they also have kind of their younger, their younger players really stepping in and Making them making a name for themselves moving forward, so they have a good balance in terms of leadership and fresh talent. And Cote, as you said before, has played really well this season, so it's exciting to see how how the season plays out. Yeah, and really, uh, I know that Plattsburgh team that uh, they'll be coming up later in the season. They are looking really tough. I believe they have scored 36 goals, have only given up one wow. so far this season. That is going to be a really tough matchup uh, for the Laker girls. How do you think they're going to be able to, like, and also Elmira, who was the national champions last year, you know, who, how do you think they're being able to tough up against the top two teams in the ECAC West? Well, I mean, they've definitely been playing very good hockey. They just need to, they just need to keep it up. They just need to try to lock down, try to not, you know, play out of their comfort zone. You can't try to, like, play up to a competition you just have to play your own style you can't be some you are who you are you can't be someone who you're not 
that's, they just have to play their own system of hockey. That's how they beat good teams. Yeah, as you said it, don't play out of your style. Um, don't try to do too much, and that all starts with staying out of the box. You can't put yourself in a, in a bad position um, down, a, down a, a woman on the ice. So if you stay out of the box, um, defense has played well, the offense will come, the scoring will come. Uh, you just got to convert on your opportunities you have, and, and things should go well. Well, I can't wait for my first uh, experience of Whiteout Weekend. It's going to be something I most likely will not forget. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. You're watching Empire Sports. Hey, guys. This is my teenage friend, Fred. Rad! <laughs> hey, pal, you want to pay attention to the road? Relax, man. I got it. Look, my man, if your bad driving gets me killed, you better hope you die, too, or I will haunt you silly. And I'm not just going to float over your bed like, Woo! I'm going to be making a more annoying noise, like, ah! And instead of wearing those long, white robes, I think I'll wear something more form-fitting and upsetting. The other ghosts will look and be like, wow, we've never seen that before. I never asked you to come back. Stop holding that over me. Just stop haunting you with that. There's something in the house. I don't know what it is, but we're not safe. I'm lucky. I get to do something I love. How many of you think homework is just as important as teamwork? I help keep kids in school. Good. And that's the name of the game. My name is LaDainian Thomason. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Hi, I'm CNN's Rob Marciano, and you're watching WTOP 10, your television station. Hello, we are back here on Empire Sports, and for this segment, we're going to discuss the NBA. So far this season, the Nets and Knicks have been downright awful. Now, guys, first it was said both these teams were off to a bad start, but now we're more than 15 games in the season, and both teams are still in the cellar of the Eastern Conference. Let's first start with the Nets. Will the Nets be missing Paul Pierce, Drex? Obviously, you look at it, you big name like Paul Pierce, of course, you're going to miss him, but maybe it could be a blessing in disguise. You talk about... Paul Pierce, he wants to get his touches. He's kind of a, a sim very similar player to Joe Johnson. I know Joe Johnson is shooting guard, but he, he kind of plays in that small forward role. Maybe he gets some more touches. He can start getting into a groove. He, he plays more of his game instead of trying to let other players get involved. I know Williams is out. Lopez will start to get more touches. So maybe some of these guys like Johnson, Lopez, can start to get into a rhythm, not have to worry about distributing the ball to other players. And then when Williams comes back, Hopefully he can be into all-star form like we know he can be. And then maybe the ball will start to get rolling. But until Williams comes back, I think it's going to be a tough stretch for, it's tough stretch for Nets fans. I, yeah, I, I, I've been saying this whole time that, that the Nets were going to not be good. Um, I, they just haven't been good. Will they miss Paul Pierce? Yes, he is a veteran leader. They, they, I, I think they need his presence right now. They need someone to who knows how to win in there. They've been injury riddled. They're old. They have a very inexperienced head coach. This is just has not been a good season for the Brooklyn Nets. And we, and we know Lawrence Frank just got uh, yeah. reassigned Lawrence today. Lawrence Frank got he's reassigned. He's now just daily reports. He's no longer assistant coach on the bench. So. Him and Jason Kidd have yeah. a little bit of a difference of opinion. Do you think that the Nets uh, can be a playoff team? You know, do you, yes. Do you, okay, Drex. So, how do you think this team starts winning? How do you think they just start rolling off and getting that themselves into real playoff contention? I mean, they're 5-12. and 12. How do you see any hope of them being an Eastern Conference contender? Well, after the loss tonight, they moved to 5-13, and 13, pushing them even more in a hole. But um, really, you've you got to get healthy. We talk about Williams is out, Karolenko's out, Jason Terry's out, now Paul Pierce is out. Four of your guys that thought were going to be key contributors are all out and leaving it really to Johnson and Lopez to do all the scoring. 
Yeah, so now we're going to switch up to the Knickerbockers, who are tied for dead last in the NBA with Milwaukee at 3-13. and 13. Now, I know they can't expect him to carry him all the way, but what is wrong with Carmelo Anthony? I, I just I think he has a bad cast of supporting players, and the Tyson Chandler injury doesn't really help either. Bargnani's been nice. You know, Shumpert's good. It's just J.R. Smith is extremely inconsistent. It, it, I don't know what's wrong with Carmelo Anthony. I think there might be a little bit too much pressure on him to perform. He's going into a free agency year. He might be trying to overplay himself a little bit, and it, it's just not working. The Nets and Knicks, however, are both helped by the fact that 12 out of the 15 teams in the Eastern Conference are under 500. So they're, they're not out of it yet, thanks to the fact that outside of Indiana and Miami, there's not really any good teams in this conference. Yeah. Well, go ahead, Drex. Yeah, I, I agree. Carmelo, I feel like he feels like he has the weight of the world on his shoulders right mm -hmm. now with the supporting yeah. cast he has. Nobody else can score. So Carmelo going into a, a, he needs a new contract in the offseason, so maybe he's trying. he is trying to do too much mm -hmm. offensively. So just quick thoughts. Like uh, you say, like you said, there's 12 teams that are under 500. How do you see the Knicks and the Nets able to catch up to those top three teams in the Pacers, the Heat, and I believe who's, who's the last team? It's, it's probably it's most likely the Bulls. Um, but it, it's how do you see them being able to catch up to them and being real threats, not just making the playoffs, but being real threats in the playoffs? They just need to beat the bad teams. So the, 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 all the teams are bad, therefore they need to at least beat the best of the worst. That's how you make the playoffs. If they can get into the playoffs, both of these teams are very capable of making a run maybe, but they just need to get in first, and they need to do that by beating up on a weak conference. Well, first for the Nets, you got to get healthy, and then you worry about yourself. It's too, way too early in the season to look at the standings. We're, we're not even a quarter of the way through the season. So for the Nets, get healthy. For the Knicks, Knicks, Knicks is, I, don't, I don't even know. It's, it's well, Carmelo's got us getting to a groove. Well, it will be interesting to see if New York and Brooklyn can turn their season around in the next coming months. We are almost done with our season one, but we are going to send it to a commercial and the other side and the other side of the break, we'll wrap it all up with some factor fiction. Stay tuned. You're watching Empire Sports on WTOP 10. The Hollywood View is back with a brand new season and a brand new look. Join me for nonstop Hollywood coverage news right here on WTOP 10 every Tuesday at 10.30 p.m. So what sets the rundown apart from other newscasts is that it brings students together to voice their opinions on the world's most important political issues. There seems to be just more events going on in 2012 than there were in previous years combined. This nation is based on the foundation that we choose the government. Do we use one, two, and three? We work hard to bring you the most up-to-date, relevant coverage of the stories you should be following. The country has now gone over the fiscal cliff. Is gun control necessary? How much is too much? Does it surprise you that it's taken this long to have a serious talk about gun control? Students need to realize that this is the time when what's going on in Capitol Hill and around the world starts to affect them. And really, the fate of the entire country is at hand here. And this is it. Five, four, three, two, one. Go camera two. Good evening and welcome to The Rundown. I'm Megan Roberts. TOP, brought to you by the letter W. Welcome back. Just an update uh, on that third team that w is over 500. It is the Washington Wizards at 9 and 9. Uh, thanks for that, uh, Anthony Jules. Now we are almost finished with this very first season of Empire Sports. Remember, you can join in on the conversation by following us on Twitter at Empire Sports OZ, as well as liking us on Facebook. Uh, you can also listen to our show on WNYO Sundays, 12 to 2. Our season finale will be on Sunday. Now, it wouldn't be Empire Sports without Factor Fiction. So guys, are you ready? 
Ready as I'll ever be. First one, let's start off. The Yankees signed Jacoby Ellsbury. Are they now a World Series contender? Yes, I think they are. Uh, adding Jacoby Ellsbury is always a nice piece, especially when you add Brian McCann as a compliment. Pitching. I think it, start, it all starts with pitching. Pitching's the number one thing in baseball. I know they signed two incredible free agents in um, McCann and Ellsbury, which is going to bolster their lineup, but it, you need to start signing some pitching. The Olympic hockey rosters will be released on New Year's Day. Will Ryan Ma Real Miller make it on the USA team? Boy, this, this is a tough one. Um, I'm going to say fiction just based on his performance. I just I, I, I can't see him really making this team based on the way he's played the, pe the past season and a half. I'll, I'll, say, I'll say fact just because it's the Ryan Miller brand name and, and he seems to be the number one. He's, he's, he's Ryan Miller. I understand that he was he led that team to the silver medal in 2010, but I think that he's just slumped off. Jonathan Quick, uh, uh, Anderson, and Jimmy Howard have all moved in. I think they're going to take that spot. Will the Nets find their groove and be in playoff position when we come back from break in late January? In, in late January, I will say fiction. Maybe at the end of the year, they'll be in playoff contention, but by the time we come back from break, no, they will not be in playoff contention. Uh, this is this is the toughest question <laughs> of fact or fiction. I'll I'll just say fiction just because the the Nets can't seem to stay healthy and they're they're not winning games at all right now. You know I actually have some optimism. Uh, I I understand you're a Nets fan, but not not very uh, reliable. Well, if they what? get healthy, they they can be a surefire playoff team. I think that they could uh, they could get back in the playoff position, like you said, Anthony. So many teams uh, not under uh, not over, over 500. The college bowl season is almost upon us. Will the UB Bulls at 8-4 and four get invited to a bowl, and which one do you project, guys? Um, I'm going to say fiction. It's really hard for mid-majors to make a bowl game, and especially 8-4, and four, I, I don't know if they're going to be in consideration, so I'm going to say fiction. I'll say fact. Maybe they get a Mac tying game if um, Bowling Green were to lose to Northern Illinois, but if that weren't to happen, maybe you look at the famous Idaho Potato Bowl or even... Um, the pinstripe bowl for this UB Bulls team, so I'll say fact. Now, I know Orange fans are very excited about the Syracuse big win over Boston College on Saturday, putting at them at 6-6 six and six in bowl eligible. Do you think they're going to get invited to a bowl, guys? I'm going to say fiction on this one, too. 6-6 six and six is not a good record. I th there's a lot of other teams that would deserve to be in a bowl game over the Syracuse Orange. I'll say fact, just because they're in the ACC. They're 6-6. Six and six. They're, I, I think they get in a bowl game, maybe the pinstripe bowl, Little, Caes Little Caesars Bowl. They get a bowl game. I could see that definitely happening. Well, that will put season one in the books. I would like to thank Anthony and Matt for being on the show. I would like to thank everyone that has been a guest on the show, along with all the crew, especially for, for the especially you, the viewers, for watching this new WTOP show. We will be back next Spencer. Happy holidays, and we'll see you in January, boys. Rob, what's up? How's it going? Hey, Guys, this is my cousin Rob from Michigan. What's up? He's a teenager. Hey, what's totally. up? Totally. <laughs> All right. Oh, hey, you want to slow down? No. Really? Huh. Hey, you know what a beautiful animal is? A horse. A horse. Yeah. Beautiful mane. Unbelievable muscle tone. When it runs, it looks like poetry in motion. It's the most beautiful thing on earth. And sometimes when you feed a horse, its lips will tickle your hand. Just, just tickle it just a little bit. It makes me giggle sometimes. I don't know. I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you don't slow down, I'm going to bite into your head like an apple. And thanks, guys, for listening to my horse stories. I could talk about ponies all day long. The forest is precious. One careless act caused by people and its beauty could be gone for a lifetime. Protect our friends in the forest. Only you can prevent wildfires. Everything we are, underneath everything we do, we are all people, connected, interdependent, 
united. And when we reach out a hand to one, we can influence the condition of all. That's what it means to live united.